one, get started. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Full Time Football. Today we're going to be starting off our first video on this channel with a nice little podcast. So before we begin, we want to introduce ourselves because it's our first video on this new channel. So I'm the host of this podcast, and here I have my two friends. Who are they? Hi, I'm Ahad, and we started the uh, we started the channel because. Um, we want, we want, like, talk about football, and we like, we like people talking about football, and football is a really fun sport, and for me, I, I'm a huge fan of football, and I support Manchester United, so this is a great privilege to start a new channel, and we hope we can grow the channel by a lot, and we, we love to talk to football fans all around the world, no matter who you are, what race you are. And yeah, this is a very, we, we're very proud of running this YouTube channel, so we're very proud. Wow, that was a nice introduction. And who else is here? Um, Jordan. Okay. Okay, if Jordan wants to introduce himself, he can. My name is Jordan. My favorite soccer team is Liverpool because I've been supporting them my entire life. And they're a great football team. So I'm really excited to be in this podcast. Yeah, I think um, not many people get to do this, and this is like a great time to like do it because right now there's a like let's talk about football for a second, right? In this world, football is everything to us. The like it helps people like express their vibes into the football world. It's very exciting. Yep, I agree. All right, so now that we're done our introduction, let's get right into the video. We're going to start off with transfer deadline day. It was a pretty boring transfer deadline day this season. The January transfer window wasn't too exciting, but we have some deals that were done on January 31st that we want to talk about on our first podcast or our first video on this channel. So let's start with Sammy Kadira from Juventus to Herzler Berlin. Obviously, he's old yeah, he, now. He he's pretty really he's pretty old. Berlin. He's pretty old for a player. And yep. let me give my honest opinion. When he went from Juventus to Hertha BSC, I think that's a good deal. And let me explain why. If you see in Juventus, right, Kadira didn't play a single game this season. Yeah, he's the former World Cup winner, though. I know, right? But he's not playing a single game. But he's old. So, Hertha, that means he's going back to his home country. And he's not playing games. I, I think he wants to play games. So, I think Hertha was the right destination to go to. Not that many clubs were interested. I, Everton were interested because um, Carlos Ancelotti, I think he worked with Kadira. And yep, Kadira was, was a very good player. But he went to Hertha Berlin. They're rebuilding a new project. And they wanted Kadira, so he went there. Everything really, weren't really that interested in him. They didn't show any effort, so I think that's a good deal for Hertha. And a good deal for um, Sammy Kadira. Yep, and I can only agree. I think that Sammy Kadira, he's a good player for a team like Hertha Berlin right now, who are trying to start a new project. I think that he's a good start. It shows intent that they want to compete, but it's a nice start. And... That's all I can really say. I don't really know about him a lot anymore because yeah. I don't really watch Juventus or the Serie A. But but he's a good player, though. He was a good player in the young ages and still is a good player, but he hasn't been... Andrew Pirlo didn't give him uh, playing time. Yep. Yeah. Well, the next one, we're actually going to swap. We're going to go from Italy... To no Germany to Italy this time we're gonna do Joshua Zerxi from Bayern Munich to Parma. Joshua Zerxi is a great youngster. He's supposed to be the next class Jan Huntelaar. He's going on loan with an option to buy for about fifteen million. Thoughts on this? I think right. Uh, I think it's a good deal. Let me explain why. Um, it's kind of similar to the uh. Sam Kijira case. So, for Joshua Zerki, right? Remember, in the summer transfer window, who did Bayern buy? They bought um, Chupo Munting. 
in the yep. Super Chaser window. Right? And then, he was from the second to the third. So that's not what he wanted. And remember, Chobu Monte has been playing more games than um, Zerka Zerki. And if Lewandowski is injured, Chobu Monte has a chance to play. Zerki doesn't. So I think, yeah, I think it's a good transfer for Zerki to um, to Parma Kassio to show his talent, right, in a lone move. So I think this is a very good deal for him because he needs playing time. He's a youngster. He can't be just staying on the bench, right? He needs to be playing games and show who he is. So I think it's a good chance for him. I think it's a good loan move for Zelsor Zerki and Syria. We we need to see how he plays. So if he plays well, then I think Bayern can sell him for 15 million quid or 20 million quid. And he what's his transfer fee. And I think if they're... If he does well at Parma, if he does well in Italy, if he's like one of those another Moise Keens, then getting him for fifteen million, that's a bargain because like yeah. the transfer market is gonna skyrocket again when Yeah, like when right now covering. right now a lot of coronavirus is causing everything, the deals are going off and everything. The yep. deals for example, the side Jane Sancho, right? Let's talk about him for a second. Um, one hundred million, no, one hundred twenty million. He costed. Manchester United couldn't yeah. pay the exact price, and their Manchester United excuse was the COVID crisis. Now look what Manchester United didn't sign him. Jane Sancho went from one hundred twenty million quid, right, went straight down to eighty five million quid, and I think they brought them up to one hundred mil. It depends on how you're playing, but he didn't play that well. And the corona crisis is causing lots of problems to clubs. Like, for example, Barcelona, Schalke, and many other clubs. Yep. All right, so now that we're done with Italy, for now, we're going to go to England. We're going to check out Liverpool. Liverpool brought in two new center backs this yes. season. Olsen Kabak. Was- yeah. Olsen Kabak yep. and Ben Davis. Not from Tottenham, from Preston. Yep. So the first one we're going to talk about is Ben Davies from Preston North End to Liverpool. Either Ahid or Jordan can talk about this one. It's an interesting think, transfer. Yeah, for me, I don't want to talk about Liverpool players. I think Jordan should talk about Ben Davies and uh, oh, the Kabak. He's a Liverpool fan. Jordan, can you speak? Yeah. So these two players, I don't know much about them, but since they're center backs, I, I think it'll be really good. So for me, so Fabinho and Henderson can play in the midfield more. Yeah, and Kabak is a very good player. Just remember that he is a young, talented player, and he's worth for the future. He's worth for the future. Yeah. 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 A lot of people talk about him. Remember, he was inter- uh, Clubs were interested in Ozan Kabak. Manchester United were pretty interested in. Him. Liverpool were interested. AC Milan were interested as well. Many other clubs too, but they just didn't have the privilege to buy Ozil Kabak. And Ozil Kabak is from two million. He costed two million quid for a loan move. Obligation to buy around twenty to twenty-five million quid. Around there, I think this is a good deal for uh, Liverpool. And this is a good deal for Liverpool because they're having centre back issues. We're having Manchester United are having centre back issues, but not that much as Liverpool. Remember, Virgil van Dijk is out, Joe Gamas is out, and Joe Amatev is out until the end of the season. So they need it, they need centre backs. They cannot just be using some CDMs in the centre back. Remember that, right? So I think yeah. Kabak and Ben Davis was a good deal, very good deals. Yeah, I agree too. And they're two young centre backs. They yeah, have a two lot young, of yeah, so young centre back for the future. Back. It's not, it's oh. not like Liverpool bought some old centre back. Like thirty-seven years old, they bought young talent for the future. Young talent for the future. So I think this is a very good deal from Liverpool. It's a very good deal. Yeah, and honestly, I think that Ozan Kabak could honestly replace Virgil Van Dijk in the future. Yeah, I w- I would love to see. Okay, look, I'm a general fan. I will I will I would like to see Virgil Van Dijk and Kabak in a centre back pairing. What do you guys think? Yeah. 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 Bye bye Joe Gomez. Bye bye Joe Matip. You're not as worth as Kabak. Kabak is like five times much better as as them. And yeah, it's a loan, but it's you never know. Liverpool might do an obligation to buy. It's not like they're like in a COVID crisis. Okay. 
So yeah, I think this is a very good deal from Liverpool, Alton Kabak. Because, remember, uh, they're having centre-back issues. They're having centre-back issues, remember that. Right. Okay, now, let's talk about Takumi Minamino. Is he on a lo- Let me just see. If he- is he on a loan or is he on a... No, no, he's on a loan. He's on a loan. Okay. Hold on. Is he on a loan? Jordan. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Loan, loan, loan. He's alone. Okay. So. Talk to me about Minamino, Amino, 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 for Liverpool to Southampton. Do you think it's a good loan move? Let me talk. Let me talk about me. Uh, let, let's, let me see. Uh, for me, yeah. I think this is a good. This is a good loan move. Because remember when when Taco Mini Mini Mino went from RB to Salzburg from to Liverpool, I thought he would be like a very good player. He had dribbling skills, he had the pace, he had the shooting, he had the passing. So I thought he would be a good signing, but Liverpool didn't ha- give him a chance. He didn't even give him a chance. And this loan move to Southampton will prove what he is worth in the Premier League and what he's worth in the world. Remember Southampton. Bought some players for RB Salzburg before. Let's talk about Sadio Mane, uh, Naby Keita. I mean, Naby Keita didn't go to Southampton, did he? But Southampton are very good at investing their youth. But Minamino is a very good player, in my opinion. A very good player. I think he's more worth... He's not worth for, like, top six. I think he's more worth for... Um, he's more worth for the mid-table team, like Southampton, Aston Villa, Wolves, Arsenal, like Burnley, like those type of mid-table teams, Newcastle. So I think this is a good, good loan move for Togami Minimino because he doesn't have the pressure from Liverpool as much he has from Southampton. And remember, Southampton needs a right, right midfield. I remember what Ken Witts did between the match and iron. They were currently in the 72nd. So I think this is a good loan move for Mini Mino. So, Jordan, what are your thoughts on this stone move? So, what are my thoughts is that, um, like, Mini Mino, yeah, he's good, but he hasn't been playing, like, a lot, so... Yeah, Klopp just hasn't choose, choose him. him. But, for Mini Mino, like, he's, like, at the start with, with Liverpool, he was good, but now he's just, like, going down. Yeah. Yeah, and I can only agree with what you guys are saying, but honestly, from a Liverpool, if I was a Liverpool fan, I really hope that Jurgen Klopp hasn't given up on Minamino because yeah. he he is actually a good player, and although he, he hasn't been playing good, like, on his day, he's a really good player. Yeah, just, and look, just look at today. He scored his debut goal for Southampton yeah. between Newcastle. And I was talking about the mid-table team are good for him. Yeah. It's, overall, I think it's a good deal. I mean, it's not a deal, but it's like a loan move. So I think it's a very good loan move because it'll show what he is and his worth. Yeah. yeah. All right, so for the final one, this isn't a January transfer deadline day move, but this is one from the night before. Let's talk about Jesse Lingard, the man, Ooh. the myth, the legend. Yeah. yeah the legend, been- Lingardinho. Say <laughs> Lingard, and you want to know something funny? Yeah. Lingard has scored more Premier League goals than Kai Havertz this season. <laughs> Same. Same, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's talk about Ling- Le- just Lingard. J. Lings is my username. And you see, I have the J. Lings picture. What a debut for Jesse Lingard. Okay, so let's talk about Jesse Lingard. Match United to West Ham on a loan move, obligation to buy. So, let's talk about him. So, Jesse Lingard to um, West Ham. So for me, yeah, I think this is a good deal. And why is it a good deal? Because remember, Jesse Lingard can't even have a chance in the Manchester United squad. He's like the third backup central attacking midfield. So when he went to West Ham, just look at his worth. Just look at his worth. World class. I think Jesse Lingard yeah. is better. Is better. Is better. Is better. Is better off to like West Ham, Arsenal, those type of team because he doesn't have. To, he doesn't have that, that that much pressure from like a world class team, like Manchester United. So for me, Jesse Lingard, I think is a good deal for West Ham, and I hope, I hope, I hope, I love, I love Jesse Lingard, Manchester United, but I think he needs playing time. So West Ham will be the perfect destination for him, and I think West Ham should buy 
have and have a permanent deal. Yeah, and he'd be really good for Manchester. I mean, West Ham. I don't really think that he's good enough for Manchester United anymore. Yeah. He's just but not maybe, but maybe he can solve our right right wing issues. You never know what he can do. He can probably solve our right wing issues. Remember Rashford? He's not clinical on the right. He's clinical on the left. So Rashford plays on the left. Maybe Lingard can play on the right. But we know Match United. They're not clinical for Jesse Lingard. They're more clinical for Mason Greenwood. Because he's more of a youngster than Jesse Lingard. Jesse Lingard is like 27, 28 right now. And Greenwood is like 19, 20. So I think I think Jesse Lingard, if he if he chooses the right destination, I think he should go for West Ham. Yeah. And honestly, I agree. Like, the only destination that I can see him staying in and doing well in is either West Ham or, like, a team like Everton. These are teams that I think that Jesse Lingard would benefit in. And that debut that he had for West Ham against Aston Villa was phenomenal. Like, I had never seen him play like that since he danced on the Emirates. It was just yeah. a phenomenal performance. And I think that he deserves it. He deserves it. He actually deserves it. He hasn't He hasn't been given the chance from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And for him in West Ham, I knew he was going to be a good player. Because we know, we know Jesse Lingard's worth. We know Jesse Lingard's worth and what he can do. So yeah, I think uh, so. I, in overall, overall, I think this is a good loan move for Jesse Lingard, and I think West Ham should buy, should buy twenty million, or should should get him on a permanent deal. Yep. Yeah. All right. So that's enough for the transfer deadline day. Now we're gonna move on to the Premier League match day twenty two. All right. Should I can I share my screen so, for this? Let me share sure. my screen for this. Yeah. Tell me if you guys can see my screen. So I can see it. Okay. okay. So let's talk about this. So this is it match day twenty? Well, so far it's Burnley live. Burnley one, Brighton one, Aston Villa one, Arsenal no, and Newcastle three. Southampton two. So this is match day twenty three. So Fulham versus West Ham. Let's see if Jesse Lingard is in the team. And he is our yes. Jaylings on the team. What a what a day from what a day. Two goals in his day, but just I'm just so proud for a lot. So Fulham <coughs> West Ham, give us your thoughts on this game. Okay, let, let me give my thoughts first. So West Ham and Fulham. I think Fulham are they cannot go go like in seventeenth place. I think Fulham will get a relegate this season again. And West Ham are just a very good team. So far, West Ham are top five. Top five. 38 points. West Ham. And I think West Ham will win this game. 3 0. Lingard, Lingard with one goal or two goals. And maybe Ben Rama for the with a goal, too. So, yeah, Jordan, give us your thoughts for the game. So, I feel like West Ham is going to play like in like attacking midfield because they have a good midfield with Jesse Lingard. Yeah. Lingard, Declan Bryce, like those two are good. Yeah. Since they're both English. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Mikel Antonio and Jesse Lingard has a good duo combination. Yeah. 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 So, Ham, what do you think of this game? I think that it's actually going to be a close game because Fulham, it's actually a close one for Fulham because one game they're good, one game they're bad. But the thing with West Ham is that they're just consistent this season. They have great players like Thomas Suchik. Um, They have that new right back called Cole Fall. And they have now just Thomas Suchik. Yes, Ivan Rama, Mikel Antonio. I'm going to say a 2 0 West Ham win. Easily. Nice, yeah, easily. Yeah. Senor Griezmann. Oh, okay. So, now let's talk about Manchester United versus Everton. Remember, Manchester United needs these three points because you never know a Liverpool win between Man City. Then it'll be a lock for us. So, Manchester United versus Everton. What do I think? I think it's going to be a 3 1. I think Manchester United has been a great this season. We have a great squad, a great bench. No Phil Jones, no Marcus Rojo. We're good. We're good to go, and we have a good we have a good team. And for me, I think it will be three one. Marcus Rashford, Bruno Fernandez, and Cavani or Martial, and they'll score. And for and for Everton, I think Lucas D and Dingye might score. Remember, Lucas Dingue, he's always involved in attack. Ooh. And he's not a defender. He is an attacker. Okay. 
So, so in my honest opinion, three one. So, Hammer, what yeah, do you what do you think about this game? So for me, Manchester United are a great team now. They're they actually like bombed Southampton. Like that game was either a fluke or like Manchester United is just back and they are destroying every team. For me, Manchester United are still gonna win this game. I think it's gonna be four two Manchester United. Ooh. Two Okay. One goal from Pogba and the last goal from off the bench. I'm going to say that somebody like Daniel James is going to score again. He's going to have that confidence and he's going to come back and score. And then for Everton, I'm just going to say two goals from Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Ooh. All right, great thoughts, great thoughts. Jordan, that's, uh, yeah, Jordan, what do you think? Well, for me, I will actually say that it's going to be a draw. Because Everton is a good team because they've they've gone undefeated in their last five games. Ooh, right, 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 right. Okay, so you think you'll be draw? So one, one, two, two, three, three. What do you think? Um, I say two, two. Oh, two, two. Okay, yeah, that that's reasonable. That's reasonable. Okay, Tottenham versus West Brom. We don't care about this game because we know Tottenham's gonna win, unless Tottenham like goes in a defensive defensive style and then you know it does some dumb mistakes. At Tottenham versus West West Brom, I think it's gonna be a two zero for Tottenham. Yeah. I think it's going to be Hyungmin Son and Serge Begwine. Yeah. But, okay, let's talk about this game. for only. Okay, let's talk about it for like two minutes. Jose Mourinho sacking. What do you guys think? For me, we know Jose Mourinho plays in a defensive style of football, right? He plays in yeah. a defensive style of football. And if he keeps on doing that, and they're not playing an attacking style, they'll, they'll, they'll lack goal-scoring opportunities. And that's why, that's why you see... In the past three games, Tottenham only scored one goal. Because they're always in the defensive style. And the whole team really can't do that. you got to do a different style of playing football. You know? But I think Holtimarino yeah. should be sacked. The Pochettino is really, really good. I don't know what type of tactics is Pochettino, Pochettino, but I know Holtimarino is defend, defensive style of football. Tactics. Hannah, what do you think about this Holtimarino sacking? I think that... Jose Mourinho could be sacked. I know that he's not as good as he was before, but the thing with Jose Mourinho is that you have to back him. Jose Mourinho has not been backed in the transfer window. I think that he had to have gotten a couple more signings, maybe let Deli Ali leave. I just don't think that he is going to mold Deli Ali into a player like he likes, like, let's say, Frank Lampard, Wesley Snyder. I just don't think he's one of those players. And I think that Jose Mourinho will... Stay until the end of the season, but I actually think he'll get sacked midway through next season. I just yeah. don't think that he's a, a manager for Tottenham. Yeah, if, you know, he can't just be playing in a defensive style of football. Like, no wonder why we, la- no wonder why Tottenham lacking goals or scoring opportunity, because we know Jose Mourinho's tactics, defensive style of play. Look at Pep; he has different types of things, right? But Jose Mourinho always sticks with one thing: defensive style of play, and you can't do that. When the opponent when the opponent is attacking, then I get it. You should go in defensive style. But when you're attacking, you can't just pass the ball back and play like a boring type of game. You gotta go on the speed, like attack if you want to score a goal. You know, so you're desperate for a goal. You got you better go on attacking style. And when the opponent's coming, you cannot concede a goal. So you, you start you start shifting from the attack to the defensive style of play. So I think that's what we need to do. So yeah, let's talk about Wolves versus Leicester City. I that think Leicester City team. will win. Leicester City 3, Wolves 2. And for Leicester City, I think James Madison is going to score a brace and Harvey Barnes with a goal. And for Wolves, mm-hmm. and for Wolves, I think Cody is going to score from a header. Controversial. Yeah. So, 3-2. Right. Or, I said 3-2. Um, Cody and... Who's the other player? Joao Mat- No, not Joao Matinho. Who do I think will score? I don't even know the Wolf squad. Um, been oh, maybe Pedro Neto. Pedro Neto by score. Oh, yeah. He's good. So, for me, I think that this is going to be a close game. I'm actually going to say it's not going to live up to the hype. Wolves won, Leicester won. I think that for Wolves, it's going to be Ruben Nash that's going to score inside of the box. He's going to do a little, a little thing. Nice skill moves, and then he's going to shoot bottom corner, goes past Peter, Peter Schmeichel. And then for Leicester, I think that it's going to be Jamie Vardy that's going to score. But, yeah, I don't think that it's going to live up to the hype. I think that it's just going to be a solid 1-1. Mm. 
Nice. Okay. So right. Okay. So uh, Jordan, what do you think about this game? So, I got a lot. My honest opinion, I'll say it's a draw, two draw. two. Okay. Okay. I think it's gonna be a really close game for us. Now, the game of the week: Liverpool versus Man City. For me, I think it would be a boring game, so I might not even watch this game. For me, it might be zero zero or one one. Because for you know, me, both it. both both teams don't want to you know concede the goal. No, for me, I think it's gonna be a one one. For me, I'll say it's a two one win. Mm. How about you, Harper? Salah and Thiago scored. Oh, Thiago! Did Thiago score a debut goal for Liverpool? No. What do you think, Hammer, about the game? Okay, so for me, this is. I think this game is actually going to be a good game. I think that there's going to be a lot of entertainment in this match, but obviously Liverpool is going to sit back. But I think that Manchester City is going to win this game 2-1. Manchester Ooh. City is going to attack that back line. Liverpool's back line, they're not, they're not strong right now because Ozan Kabak and Ben Davies aren't. They don't really don't have chemistry. Neither does Trent Alexander Arnold or. Aren't Andrew Robertson with them, and I just think that overall their defense isn't going to be as good as it will be, not as nearly as good. And then at the back line of City, you have probably the best pairing this season so far in the entire world, John Stones and Ruben Neves. I just think if anything, Manchester City could get a clean sheet, but I think yeah. somebody like um, Mo Salah is going to end up getting it in the back of the net. And then for Manchester City, I think it's going to be Riyad Mahrez is going to score a goal. And then I think it's going to be... Raheem Sterling? Yeah. He's going to score. Oh, yeah, yeah. Their midfield's really good. Just because, you know, uh, man, you know, like, some fans were like, oh, Kevin De Bruyne isn't here. Man City getting wrecked. They don't lose games. But look, Man City has a world-class midfield. Look who they have. They have Gondogan. Yeah. Phil Foden can easily play in the camp position. They have Rodri. They have just they just have a world class midfield. Even Bruno Silva can play in the camp. Like yeah. look, they have world class players. You know, so I think Man City just because Kevin De Bruyne is in there doesn't mean Man City will lack. You know, if us yeah, if we lose Bruno sure. Fernandez, we'll we'll lose some lack of concentration. But we have Donny Van de Beek, so maybe not. Okay, so Sheffield United versus Chelsea. I think it will be an easy win for Chelsea. Do we know? I think that. But 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 okay, I'm I'm not saying three no anymore. I just realized that Sheffield by playing a five three two or three five two, so that's gonna be difficult for Chelsea. I'm going for a one no or one one. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with my one nil because Thomas Tuchel, we know that he keeps possession mostly eighty to twenty percent. He is a massive manager and he's big on the philosophy of keeping possession but if i'm being honest sheffield united are a locked team like you can only get one or two goals past them unless you're like manchester city they've been very consistent this season honestly in my opinion they've been playing better than some of the top six clubs mainly liverpool mainly chelsea as well i still think that chelsea is going to scrape out a win one nil right okay yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. So this is a good game. So Leeds United versus Crystal Palace. Let's talk about that. Oh no, no, no. Oh, Jordan, Jordan. I forgot. Um, give us your thoughts on yeah. this game. Sheffield United versus Chelsea. Um, I think Chelsea. I think this is an easy game for Chelsea. I'll say two, three, three, one win. Mm. But remember, um, Sheffield play with the back five, and that can be hard. That's what mid table teams do. Right. Yeah, but I think this is an easy game for Chelsea. But they just have to be careful with their midfield and all everything. Leeds yeah. United versus Crystal Palace. For me, it'll be a 5-0. Five, 5-0? No. 5-0? Five, no. No, 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 no. Actually, 5-2 actually, or 5-3. Because we know Leeds' defense is horrible. But we know Leeds' attacking style of play. They always do what I did. You know, um... Mar- Marcelo Bielsa is like Jose Mourinho, but like, you know, they just stick with their own tactics. Like, for example, Jose Mourinho defensive style of tactics and and Leeds attacking style. Remember what they did with Manchester United versus Leeds? They don't give up. They just play in their attacking style. For me, it would be yeah. a five-two. I think it be- Benteke didn't go to West Brom, so I think Benteke might score. Maybe Matashiroi. 
For Leeds, I think Bamford will score a hat trick. Rodrigo with the goal. Rodrigo with the goal. And Phillips with a goal too. Ban so for Leeds United, their best player is not Phillips. Their best player yeah. is Patrick yeah, Bamford. Patrick Bamford. Right, so for me, this game isn't – it's going to be a good game in terms of goals. It's just not going to be as – like, how do I say it? But, like, it's going to be a terrible game, but it's going to be entertaining because there's going to be a lot of goals, but both both teams are going to be pretty trash. I think that it's going to be 3-1 for Leeds United. But, honestly, it could go either way because Leeds yeah. United – they sink in a lot of goals and they score a lot of goals as well. So remember Liverpool. Just, th- remember the Liverpool game. Liverpool three. Yeah. No, no, Liverpool four. Leeds United three. They scored a load of goals, but Liverpool just found the t- uh, Liverpool just found the penalty from Rodrigo to win the game. Yeah. yeah so this is our prediction. Jordan, what do you think about this game? Um, I'll say um Crystal Palace will win one nil. Hmm. All right, all right. All right, all right. All right. So this is our this is our Premier League predictions. All right. Now it's time to move on to some of the more entertaining things of this week, but they didn't really fit into our topics. For the other things that we're going to be talking about, we're going to be picking three things, and those three things are Onana's doping ban. Cristiano Ronaldo and Neymar turn 36 and 29. And who should replace Zinedine Zidane should he get sacked sometime this week? Okay, I would love that with Chelsea. So okay, let's talk about Andre Ronaldo and doping ban. Okay, so Andre Ronaldo's response. I, I, know, I know him personally. He's a very good player. For him, I think you did the wrong thing. Because look what he said in, a, in his thing. He accidentally uses girlfriend's medicine. Right? Mm-hmm. Because he was having yeah. a headache, so he. I, but remember, they looked similar. You can't just blame someone that looks similar, you know. That 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 the medicine looked similar. So I think you have to do the wrong thing. Maybe like a short term ban, right? For some three weeks ban, yeah. four weeks ban, or two month, three month ban, but not for a year. A year is too harsh, too harsh. Like especially in a team like the Era de VC, like we're talking about twelve months, like Luis Suarez. I think I remember when he bit Chiellini in the 2014 World Cup. That was only a six-month ban. And then we have Daniel Sturridge, gambling ban. He got six months banned or four. I don't even remember. But I just don't think that 12 months by accident is right, especially to an Ajax team like this where they have Quincy Promis and Jail. And then yeah, um, I, and there are lots. Yeah. The, even Viva La FIFA said there's loads of problem going on in Amsterdam. In Ajax. Yeah. For example, um, let's talk about three things. Quincy Prom has a jail situation. He went to Spartak Moscow. Remember, that's the deal that Ajax did for him. And then, that's uh, Sebastian Haller, now in the European squad, because Ajax mistakenly didn't put him on the European squad, and they made a mistake. Yeah. And right now, Andre Onana. I think this is not fair for Ajax. I, I I think you did the wrong thing to be honest. The, I think that sometimes just being sometimes hard. the rules are so shitty. The rules are so shitty sometimes. Yeah, I think it's a big mistake. Yeah, yeah, I do think it's a big mistake. Yeah. All right, should we move on to Cristiano Ronaldo and Neymar turning thirty six and twenty nine yeah. now? Yeah. yeah. Alright, so, so happy birthday! Okay, happy late birthday to Cristiano Ronaldo and Neymar Jr. If you're watching yeah. this, if you're watching this, <laughs> which will probably be no. <laughs> but no, happy birthday to Cristiano Ronaldo and Neymar Jr. Ronaldo on the same day, right? They're born the same day. After yeah, they're born the same day. But not same year though. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, yep, thirty-six, and Neymar, no, February fifth and February fifth. Yeah. But I feel kind of sad for Ronaldo and Messi because then it's going to be like an end of an era. Yeah. Hopefully we have like a Mbappe Holland era or Mbappe Holland Sancho era, you know? So now the big question is, do you guys think that Neymar still has time to win a Ballon d'Or? It's a tough question, to 
be honest. Yeah. I think he can. I think he can. But his injuries got to stop him. And his fake acting, uh, his fake acting should stop him. And for Neymar, yeah. I think he should play the central attacking midfield. I think for Neymar, he just has to focus more on his football other than, like, partying. And then, like, partying causes a lot of, like, confusion. And, like, he parties a lot. Okay, he still scores a lot of goals, but we're talking about league. Uh, yeah, I just think, I think, I think if he, he focused, be... he could win a Ballon d'Or easily. He could have won yeah. it at Barcelona if he stayed at Barca. Yeah, but I think for League One, it's pretty easy. Not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. League One is pretty easy. You should go to like, you should go to like La Liga, Premier League, those type of teams. League One is really easy, to, in my opinion. Maybe Serie A. Serie A could be a good league for him. True. Honestly, I still think that if he. I, I still think that he deserved the 2015 Ballon d'Or. Yeah, in my so opinion. Weird. You're so good, yo. He's a Brazilian god. And for me, Neymar... These days, people talking about Neymar, Ronaldinho, but Neymar is honestly better. You remember the old days, right? When Ronaldo used to play? It was so easy. Even us kids can play in the league. Old days. <laughs> the old days were pretty easy, but now look at this. Competition's high. Everything's so hard right now. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now let's move on to who should replace Zinedine Zidane if he gets sacked. Okay. Who do you guys think would be the best manager? So around I here? think they they bought three three uh three how do you call it not three uh alter, alternatives. Yeah. Raul, Nagelsmann, and Al Ooh. Algeri. I'm so sad for Frank Lampard. Well, I think everybody knows that. Big shots. Look, I don't want Algeri. Algeri is kind of like Jose Mourinho. So he's cross for me. Nagel's man, he's at RB Leipzig. I would love him to come to Real Madrid. But for me, if you co- if a club legend coaches a club, I will love that. And that's Raul. And I will love oh, Raul as a coach. See Frank Lampard going to Madrid. No, I don't see Frank Lampard going to Madrid. I, I think he'll coach like Dortmund or something. <laughs> but for Raul, I think he should go. For, I think I think I should go for Raul, because Raul is a club legend and he knows the club very well. Nagelsmann doesn't know Real Madrid very well. Even Allegri doesn't know Real Madrid that well. And Raul knows. Raul, remember, Raul's already Ra- Raul's already coaching in Real Madrid, but he's co- I think he's coaching for the U23 or U18. 23s. 23s, yeah, yeah. So I think this would be a g- good, good manager. Zidane. For Zidane, I don't think it's Zidane's fault. I just think they don't have, Zidane doesn't have the correct players. They don't have like good players. Remember, Hazard is not a good player. Benzema is a good player. Favini doesn't do. He's like he's like on. Uh, he he seems like he's on the other opponent's team. So I think Real Madrid needs some good players. I think that's how yeah. they'll win. They'll win the Champions League, La Liga, whatever they can dream of. Yeah, because remember, when they used to have Ronaldo, Benzema, and Bale in their primes, like, these guys clicked, and Zinedine Zidane knew what he was doing. They won three UCLs straight. Yeah. Now I just think Real Madrid doesn't have those players anymore. Yeah, what can Zidane don't... do, you know? But this is football. If you sack, you sack. Yeah, you know, this is clubs. They just don't realize these, and they just sack uh, coaches. Oh, guys, breaking news. What happened? Real Madrid, Sergio Ramos is injured. Oh. Ooh. It's fine. Eh? It's such a almost injured again. I don't, I don't really care. He's injured for like one to three months. Oof, what type of injury is it? Um, I think they said it was like a leg injury. Oh, shit. It's probably that knee injury again. Yeah. So, I think for me, it's Raul. What do you think, Jordan? Who should we replace Zidane? I don't know. Because there's, like, there's so many, um, there's so many managers that are free. But I don't know who. Who to choose? Yeah. I'm going to go big or go home. I'm going to say that Maurizio Sarri is going to take over at Real Madrid if they don't No, no, no but, but remember, Maurizio but Sarri. remember, but remember. Sarri might go to Marseille, but remember, Real Madrid already chose their three um, options to replace Zidane. They already did. Oh, Raul, Nagelsmann, or Allegri. Okay, so then I'm going to change mine. Outside of alternatives, obviously you have the three big candidates, but honestly, I think that they should give Arsene Wenger a final job in football. Ooh, Arsene Wenger. 
Ooh. I just think that he'd be yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, but I would choose Raul because he knows the Real Madrid players already, you know? And he's already so associated with them. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing for Arsene Wenger, too, he already had turned down Real Madrid two times, but that was when Arsenal was, like, really good. Now we're talking, like, he's on the verge of retiring. Like, does he want another job? And a team like Real Madrid would be such a huge way to go to football. Right, and right, he can right. speak Spanish. Yeah. Arsene Wenger can speak Spanish, right? Yeah, he speaks so, Spanish. Yeah, so he can... So he can, so he can associate with the Real Madrid players. He can. Yeah. So this is my well, opinion. Well, my friends say that Ramos's injury, it's a knee injury, and he has to do surgery now. Yeah, knee injury. Yeah, I knew it. It's always a, it was always a knee injury. Yeah. So in my so opinion, he has to do surgery. Um, in my opinion, uh, I think Raúl or Hazard Wenger. But also, you know, I'm I'm truly for the love of these, and I think Raúl. My opinion. Yeah. But I love Hazard Wenger to come. The Arsenal legend. So what also, else? Before yes. we go, I wanted to talk about Bournemouth. Don't have a manager right now. They just sacked their manager no. three days ago. Yeah, but no, but they got a new manager. They did. They did. Yeah, John Terry. <laughs> oh, true. That would be so. The candidate for me that I would love to see at Bournemouth, Frank Lampard. Frank Lampard back to championship. Yeah, he he would bring them straight back up, and honestly, I think that he could build them back into a mid-table team. Oof! Oh damn! Uh, oh, that's a big boost! Oh my god! Let me say, John Terry, oh, is he has he been appointed? No, he hasn't been appointed yet. No, not yet. Let me say, Frank um, Lampard. Has been. No, I think I'm just looking at the news right now. Uh, the the viewers can see my screen. Oh, so here, for okay, okay. So I don't, I don't think a, a Bor- I don't think Lampard is gonna go to Bournemouth because right now in Fan Nation, they're saying former Chelsea boss Frank Lampard not interested in taking AFC Bournemouth vacancy. That would be, yeah. I don't think that he should, but if he, but if he, he, he needs a job, to I think he should go to Bournemouth. For, to yeah. Yeah, so I, I would go there, but like, yeah. it, like right after going from Chelsea to AFC Bournemouth, that's a massive drop. Like you're going from one of the best clubs in in the world to a team that was in League Two ten years ago, but like still. Yeah, so in my opinion, yeah, Bournemouth. We don't really care about Bournemouth because they're in the Championship. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so I think this is time to end the podcast. This has been a great first start. I honestly yeah. loved it. I loved being here with you guys, just talking about football. It was a good talk. Yeah. So we're going to be uploading daily from now on. At least we'll try to. Maybe. Thank you guys for yeah. watching. And any last words? Um, my last words? Please subscribe to our, our channel. We are trying to grow it massively. Uh, please join our Discord server as well. We will leave it in the yeah. description below. And yeah, please follow our Instagram and Twitter. We yeah. will follow and we will be releasing our website soon. We don't know the date, but we're working on it, but we will release it soon. So yeah. Big plans coming. Big plans coming. Big future plans coming. We will, we will give you guys all the news soon of what's happening. And we're trying to grow this like football terrorists and all the groups, but we're trying to be better and we are dreaming big. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you guys so much for watching and goodbye.